Welcome, Internet. Today we are working on the final of a three-part series. Uh, we are going to be assembling this hub. Actually, the final assembly, it's already assembled. We're just actually going to be doing the measurements. So we figure out what size of these wonderful little shims. There was, well, rings. <laughs> I could call a lot of things. Um, if we're gonna need some more of these shims, to shim it up to make sure that this is centered between the wishbone. And we're gonna be using a caliper, dial indicator, a couple of screwdrivers, and let's get going. Oh, part one covered, you know, basically installing the races and lubing the bearings. Part two is sticking everything together and how the shims all fit together. A uh, link to those videos will be down below me. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, let's get started. All right, so here are the tools we're gonna need. Well, you're not gonna need those. Um, you're gonna wanna use a wrench. It's 11 sixteenths. Um, torque gauge, because you want to torque these down to spec, which I think is like 100, well, 95 foot pounds. And there's the other half of that. Um, <clears throat> we've got a couple different gauges. We've got a depth micrometer, or surface micrometer, whatever you want to call it. Two dial calipers, one manual, one uh, digital. We'll probably be using this one. I prefer to use that one just because whenever I need to get this, the batteries are dead and they take a weird ass battery and I can never find it. And anyway, and feeler gauge and a couple screwdrivers. So, oh, and you probably also noticed that magically this piece of steel ended up here. Well, that is for this. This is another tool that we're going to need. We're going to be using this to measure. Well, somebody had a rough night last night. The dial indicator is to measure distance between the back of the bearing and the back of the hub so we can determine which size shim is required in order to maintain the proper preload. We're going to use shims, rings, I don't know what they are, cock ring, who knows. All right, I think we're going to stop right there. And let's get on with the measuring to determine what size ring we're going <laughs> to, I mean spacer we're going to need. Alright, first thing what we're going to do is, I've got this all set up, I didn't really bore you with it. You take these two screwdrivers and you're going to position them opposite of each other between the water ring. These. And it, what it's going to do is it's going to move the carrier hub or housing, whatever you want to call it, and the this t test indicator is actually on the other end of the wheel hub. So what, what's going to happen is this is hopefully, well, this is... For the love of God, what I'm trying to say here is when I pry down on the screwdriver, if there's any end play, the housing will go up and the amount will be indicated on the dial indicator. <laughs> Funny name, right? You want preload. End play is slop. Preload puts them together, taper bearings like preload. So, here, let's give this a go. So I got the two screwdrivers. Make sure you put them right apart from one another because if you don't, then the housing twists and you bend the water ring or break the tip of a screwdriver like I did earlier. And so I'm just kind of gently prying up. Yep, see, there we go. I don't have them directly across from each other and they're trying to fuck her off. And there we go. So we've got about, yeah, about a thousandth of preload. So what we're going to do now is we are going to measure the, dif the distance between the hub here. All right, I'm going to interrupt myself again here. So this is the seal and the back of the taper bearing and the middle part is the hub poking out through the other side and there is an offset between the back of the bearing and the back of the hub that we need to measure so we can 
put in the proper size spacer in order to maintain the one to three thousandths preload. This one's actually kind of buggered up. Yeah, I did my best to try to smoothing it out. I'm sure it's not absolutely perfect, but hey, you know, you piss with the cock you got. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dial caliper and get zeroed out. Once again, I'm gonna interrupt myself. The bit about the end of the hub being knackered, this is where it makes a difference because the surface is uneven and the point that you're trying to do your measurement with with the end of the veneer caliper is so tiny it's virtually impossible to get a consistent reading so I'm gonna spare you the half a day of me looking like a dumbass trying to get a consistent reading move on to using the depth gauge or surface micrometer I'm gonna go with this and um, so what we're gonna do what we've got is I put these pieces of aluminum angle so I had a flat surface, you know, a good reference. Um, this is a surface gauge and so when you, it's got about an inch worth of travel and I put a flat surface, a flat one on it so we can kind of estimate because the back of the hub isn't flat. This thing was chowdered big time and so, you know, I cleaned it up and made it as flat as I could. So. Here we go. And so let me slide it on and off to the hub, which gives me 123.5 thousandths. So from that, you would take. All right, I'm going to step in again because my brain at this point is obviously failing me. Um, yes, it's 123.5 thousandths minus the 1,000 end play that we already have. And that gives us 122.5. And the closest spacer that I have is 122. So that's the one we're going with. And that'll give us a half a thou end play, which is tiny, really tiny. A piece of paper is 3,000. So good enough for the girls I go out with. All right, moving on. We're now heading off to the carrier portion where the thingy, <laughs> the housing, uh, attaches to the wishbone. And All right, now that we got that over with, it's time to check the end play and the run out on these. And this is actually pretty simple. Um, when I put this together, originally I didn't really talk about the shims. They actually, they come in a couple of different sizes. I think they come in um, one thousandths and three thousandths. And what you want to do is you kind of want to divide them up evenly be between both sides because you want to have the equal amount of um, preload on both of these taper bearings. You don't want to have you know more load on this one and more load on that one. And so essentially that's what we're about to check. How you check it is with the fuel gauge. And Around here, oh, here it is. So here's your fuel gauge. And these washers here are the washers um, from the inner, inner fulcrum or wishbone. And they actually are about the same size as the housing. And so I don't really understand why they're making such a big deal about the casting. Because I, it, the, the casting isn't going to be touching this. It's actually going to be rubbing up against the inner um, seal holder thing. <laughs> well, once again, I'm going to interrupt myself because the one thing that I didn't mention about you know the number of shims being evenly spaced is the amount of shims. Now, if you clamp all that together and you have too many shims, then you are going to get some weeble wobble back and forth and you will be able to stick the feeler gauge in and you will be able to take it apart, pull some shims out and retest it. So there's that. And it's not rubbing against the seal ring. It's going to be clamping against the seal ring. So anyway, carry on. <clears throat> All right. So basically what you're doing is, is you're checking to make sure that our bearings don't have any in play. And so they suggest that you put pressure on it on one side. So I'm leaning on it, and then you take, what I'm going to do is, the minimal distance is like, 
a thousandth. And so I'm going to take my smallest shim, which is, uh, it is 15, it's one and a half thousandths. And so I'm putting in here and I'm trying to get it in between the seal ring and this washer and it's not going. So I don't have any amp play going that way. I turn it over and do the same thing on this side. So I'm, I'm really leaning on this and well, nope. Not going in there. Now, the other thing about this particular is this housing is really chowdered. So, you're not going to get a really good measurement anyway. But according to the book, it says that you're supposed to take and measure it between the washer and the housing. And I mean, it's 12 will fit in there. It's tight fit for 12 here. Um, I bet you I could go up to 15. Now, when we put when I put this together, I'll be using you know, when I install it inside <clears throat> the, the wishbone fulcrum, which will be in the next video. I'll be using these shims. To center this so we've got the wishbone that attaches here and so I'll be putting these shims in to center it between the wishbone because it's there's going to be a little bit of slop and you don't want the wishbone to clamp in on it because yeah that's not where because then you're not really sure that this is going to be pushing on the bearings evenly and that it's in there straight so <clears throat> That's what these are. And again, my friends at SMG Barrett supplied me with a bunch of shims and they're going to actually be going into here. So essentially, that's what, what I just did. You just take a feeler gauge, apply pressure. So, yep, feeler gauge. <clears throat> apply pressure to one side. Jam it in there and see if you can get it in between the seal ring and this big washer. And I've got one and a half thou shim or a feeler gauge and it won't go. So this is good. And our next video will be covering getting this installed um, and then Next will be brakes. So we are getting really close and seeing that uh, the coronavirus has given me more time off than I really would like, um, I'll have some time to do this. Now that we're done with that malarkey, I'm going to do something real important. I am going to make cookies.